Okay, quick review for the week. I'm gonna be working questions 21 through 28. So 21, we learned how to simplify radicals. My root is three, so I gotta think of perfect squares, of perfect cubes. Right, I, I gotta think of what's two to the third, three to the third, four to the third, five to the third, as far as I need to go. All right, I know two to the third is eight. Three to the third is 27. Four to the third is 64. Five to the third is 125. The root was three, so I was doing to the third. Now, number wise, 250. Let me break this into two radicals. I'm using root three. Two numbers are multiplied equals 250. One of my numbers has to come from here. Now, some people, what no, the, the multiplication that comes to our mind quickly is 25 times 10. But neither the 25 nor the 10 are on my list. So no, I cannot. Remember, one number, one of the two numbers has to either be an 8, a 27, a 64, 125. So in my case, I'm going to think 125 times 2. because I know the cube root of 125 is five. So numbers wise, this is gonna become five cube root of two. Letter wise, my exponent is smaller than my root, so nothing I can do. A to the second on the inside. So actually let me write my five a little closer. That's it. All right, 22. My root is two, right? When we don't see it, we assume it's a two. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna think of perfect squares. Like what's two to the two? What's three to the second? What's four to the second? What's five? And so on. I think I can go up to right there. I think I'll be good. Two to the second I know is four. Three to the second I know is nine four squared and five squared. I know those. So I'm thinking, got to multiply, I got to separate this into two numbers. Two numbers that multiply equals 72. One of my numbers has to be from here. I know 72 divided by four is 18. So that means that four times 18 is 72. The square root of four is two. So this becomes two square root of 18. If there was a numbered, if there was a numbered outside of my radical, I would have multiplied two times that number, but there's none. Okay. So now look at this as if you, you were starting from scratch. Two radical 18, can you do better? Yeah. Square root of 18, let me break this as two radicals. I'm gonna break this as nine times two, because I know the square root of nine is three. So it's gonna give me six radical two, All right? This three multiply with this two outside, that's where I got the six, six radical two. Now, letter wise, my exponent is bigger than my root, right? Three is bigger than two, so I can do something better. So V to the third, write your V three times. And I'm gonna do groups of two. Right, V to the third, notice I wrote it three times. My root is two, so I'm gonna do groups of two. So there's one group. How many groups did I make? Just one group. So I'm gonna be V to the one on the outside, or just V. Any leftovers? Yeah, one V. That's gonna go inside of the radical. So my answer is six V radical two V. Nice. Let's take a look at number 23. We added subtracted radicals. First thing is simplify each radical if you can. The first one, radical two, nothing I can do. So I'm just gonna go negative two, radical two. The next one, radical 18, yeah, I can break that as nine times two. Nine times two is 18. The square root of nine is three. Now this three with this negative two that I was outside to begin with, multiply those you're gonna get negative six radical two. 
Now, square root of 45, yeah, I can do better. Let me break that 45, let me break that as nine times five because the square root of nine is three. Now this three multiply with this two, that's gonna give me six radical five. Then combine your like terms. I see these two have the same radical. So I'm just gonna combine the coefficients and number on the outside. Negative two and a negative six, that's a negative eight. So let me call this negative eight radical two plus six radical five. Those cannot be combined because they have different radicals. All right, looking at here, mm, radical three, nothing I can do. Now radical 12, again, let me break this into two numbers that multiply equals 12. One of them has to be a perfect square. People usually think six times two, but now we cannot do that because six nor two are perfect squares. Instead, let me go four times three. The square root of four is two. Now this two multiplied with this negative two is gonna give me negative four radical three. At the end, 27, let me think of that as nine times three because the square root of nine is three. Now this three with this negative side is gonna give me negative three radical three. Now, interesting here is that they all have the same radical. So they all can be combined. I'm just gonna combine that coefficients. Let me see that as a negative one. I'm thinking negative one minus four minus three. That's negative eight. I'm gonna call this negative eight radical three. Then we learn how to multiply. Let me distribute this negative two to the second parentheses. That's gonna give me negative two plus eight radical five. Whole numbers with whole numbers, radicals with radicals do not mix and match. Okay, now let me distribute this four radical five times one. Let me multiply the whole numbers. So four radical five. And then let me multiply here. So if I multiply the whole numbers, that gives me negative 16. If I multiply the radicals, I get radical 25. Right, whole numbers with whole numbers, radicals with radicals. Okay, simplify if you can. My first term is just a negative two, nothing I can do. And then I have plus eight radical five, nothing I can do, plus four radical five. Now here, square root of 25 is five. It becomes a whole number, not a radical anymore. Five times a negative 16, that's a negative 80. It doesn't have a radical anymore because the whole the, the radical became a whole number. Now let me combine like terms, negative two and a negative 80. I'm gonna call that negative 82. And then I see these radicals here. I'm just gonna add the coefficient. So I'm gonna go 12 radical five. Number coefficient is the number outside, that's it. Looking at number 26, five radical three multiplied to the second parentheses. So that's gonna give me five radical nine plus 15 radical three. Whole numbers with whole numbers, radicals with radicals, do not mix them. All right, now let me distribute the negative two to the second parentheses. So that's gonna give me negative two radical three minus six. All right, looking at the first term, square root of nine can simplify that. The square root of nine is three. Multiply with this five on the front. I wanna say that becomes 15 plus 15 radical three minus two radical three minus six. Right. There's no other radical I can simplify. Now combine your like terms. 15 minus six, I usually call that nine. On the radicals, 
they have radical three. So combine the outside numbers, right? That coefficients, 15 minus two, or you should call that 13 radical three. Lastly, multiple mm, division. I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by two plus radical two. Right, I'm using the term in the in the bottom, but instead of a minus, I'm writing plus. All right, so multiply the five to the second parentheses. So it's gonna give me 10 plus five radical two. At the bottom, put this in parentheses, distribute the two to the second parentheses. So it's gonna give me four plus two radical two. And then distribute the negative radical two. So it's gonna give me negative two radical two minus radical four. On the top, there's nothing I can do. So 10 plus five radical two. Nothing I can do on the top. The bottom, a couple of things. These terms in the middle cancel out because two minus two, right? Now combine that coefficients, two minus two is zero. Another thing at the end, minus radical four, isn't that just minus two? Because the square root of four is two. So at the bottom, I see four minus two. I see it right here, like four minus two. So let me just call that two. No negative signs at the bottom. Now, when I look at my coefficients, there's nothing I can do. Coefficients, what I mean is my whole numbers. Can I divide them all by the same thing to make them smaller? No, nothing I can do. So that's it. Lastly, let's take a look at number 28. Let me multiply it, top and bottom by a negative five minus five radical five. I'm only switching that sign in the middle, not the negative from the beginning, just that plus sign, switch it to minus sign. All right, let me multiply the four, looking on the top, let me multiply the four to the second parentheses. So that gives me negative 20 minus 20 radical five. Looking at the bottom, let me distribute the negative five to the second parentheses. So that's gonna give me 25, plus 25 radical five. And then let me distribute this five radical five to the second parentheses. That's gonna give me negative 25 radical five minus 25 radical 25. Oof. All right, the top, there's nothing we can do. So I'm just gonna write negative 20 minus 20 radical five. At the bottom, a couple of things. The two terms in the middle cancel out. So I have 25 minus, now this is five, right? The square root of 25 is five. Multiply with the 25 on the front is 125. So I see 25 minus 125. I'm gonna call that negative 100. Okay, first thing, I see a negative sign at the bottom. I'm gonna change the signs of everything. So I'm gonna change it to positive 20 plus 20 radical five over positive 100. Can I have negatives at the bottom? So I switch the signs on everything. Then I look at my coefficients, my whole numbers, 20, 20, and 100. I can divide them all by 20. So that's gonna give me one plus one radical five over five. Better known, it's okay if I just write this as one plus radical five over five. The one outside of the radical, yeah, I can choose to not write it. So one plus radical five over five, that's it.